Hello and welcome to Making Waves by Todd Herbert. If you enjoy kit building, making electronic circuits, and other do-it-yourself projects, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon to miss any of my most excellent videos. In front of us we have the Vogler Time. This is a 10-level music LED kit. So let's show you. I got this off Amazon for total $11.99, and this will provide you a lot of soldering practice and a really cool device when you're completed. So here we go, Vogler Time, fun project, fun time. I love that sticker, looks awesome. Let's go see what they give us in the kit. So let's get some English instructions and a bag full of parts. Let's go open this up and go over those parts. I'm just gonna dump this off to the side here and we'll try to go through most of this together and give you an idea of what's in store for our build. Okay, first I wanna look at the instructions. I think this is a basic sheet of instructions. Okay, there we go. You can look at this. You can pause and read it if you want. It uses two controller chips. I noticed that to control the um, signal, the audio to the LEDs. And then it talks about the PDF file. Now I emailed them and they sent me the PDF file. Uh, really nice. It's color, easy to ID your resistors. Uh, just a great thing. It's, it's got a picture by picture process, which is really nice in case you're stuck and not sure what to do. Gives an overview of the, what's going to happen, what you need as far as work materials. Okay, next we have a schematic of the project. And there you go, for those who read schematics. All right, and then, I'm gonna open this up. Let's give us a little bit of uh, bill of materials. There you are, what's in the box there. I can notice right, right away there's a lot of resistors, capacitors, switches, a couple potentiometers, and I'll show you most of that. This is the fun one right here, the micro USB. It's a surface mount. I've never done surface mount before, but I'm gonna give it a try. And I'll show you kind of the method I'm gonna to use to do that. They say, by using surface mount, tech carefully. Well, I don't have a hot air gun, so I'm gonna to have to use a soldering iron, and I'm gonna give you an idea what I'm gonna do there. So there you go. Going over all that, pretty simple instructions. Again, you can uh, download, the, get the PDF from them. If not, contact me on my about section. I have an email address. Just say, hey, Todd can you send me that file? I will send it to you, no problem. So pretty basic instructions, but there you go, in English, love that. Next, the PCB board. Dun, 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 upside down. <laughs> so it's gonna be pretty much like this, your project when you're complete. Here's your meter, you're gonna have 10 LEDs, one for each channel, two microphones, two controller chips. Looks like an op amp chip. We have, uh, some, those are trimmer, uh, I think, potentiometers. We have, of course, a bunch of resistors there in a row, our capacitor row. Looks like we have some inputs for the uh, audio. And looks like we, there's our surface mount USB I'm going to talk about. And it looks like we have some transistors. There you go. And then uh, some more capacitors. So, and then, of course, we have optional 5-volt in on the corner if you can't get the USB surface mount. That's going to be hard for a lot of people who have never done that. And this will be the first time I've done it. So I'm kind of watching. I watched enough videos how to do that. I'm going to give you an idea how I'm going to. So that's the board. So to the side, I'm going to go over some stuff they give you. They give you the cable. So if you get that USB mounted, you can use the micro USB cable to power the board, which is nice to give you that. Like, we don't have enough of those, portable radio guys. <laughs> uh, here we go. We got a 3AA battery compartment. This is if you can't get the USB mounted. You can use the optional 3AA battery power and just solder that right in. And they give you a nice little patch cable here for your audio in if you don't want to use the microphones. I'm probably just going to use the microphones to demo this. But uh, this is nice if you have a line out and you want to see the uh, level of your uh, you level your, your signal to the uh, lights. I think that's kind of cool. All right, and next is the, let's see, I got some ICs here. So those are the, I don't know, those are the focus. But uh, let's see if I can get that up there. There you go. So the uh, LM3915s, two of those. And you get a little op amp chip there. Text instruments, cool. So the quality components, that's nice. And the back here, they give you the sockets to solder in. So the chips are replaceable. I like that. Now again, more soldering experience. Those are what, 16s, 18s, 18s, excuse me. Uh, so yeah, you have 18 pins on each of those sockets. And of course you get, looks like an eight there. So a lot of soldering experience along with those LED legs are gonna solder in. So these are gonna be fun, good practice. And then here is a bunch of your components. I'm not going to dump them out, but I'm just going to show you what's in the bag. Two microphones, looks like a power switch, 
your potentiometers trimmers so you can adjust the sensitivity of the microphones. And then uh, let's see, we have a couple of transistors in there, our resistors, ultralight capacitors, and then uh, yeah, the LEDs, I think there's 20 of those. And then we have the micro USB surface mount power jack. That's gonna be the hardest part of this project. I'm gonna get that out of there and show you. So that's the parts bag right there. And let me show you this little dude. <laughs> this one has me a little nervous because it's so small. Uh, yeah, if I can even get that into focus. Come on, focus. Yeah, it's really small. Now it's got little retaining uh, clips that go through the board where you can anchor one side in so it holds it in place, which is going to be very important. And you get those little wires, those five little wires coming off that have to connect to the board. Now I noticed on the board, you're only really worried about the outside wires. I guess the middle ones can be unconnected, just don't bridge them. Just in case you put a data cable in, you're using it off the PC, you don't want to short or anything like that. So um, if you, you can leave them blank or try to get them all soldered to the board properly. I'm going to try to get them all soldered to the board properly, even though those middle three won't be active. Because your, your ground and positive are the, the last wires. I'm not sure which one it is, but one of those two is ground. One of them is ground, one of them is positive. So there's that. So what I'm going to do is place it on the board here. Anchor it in one little spot there. And then I'm going to take my iron. Let's see if I got my iron handy. If I can get over to the table without dropping anything. So we have our iron, and I'm going to do what they call a drag method, where you put a lot of flux. Let's get this. Come on, give me enough cord here. Um, you take and you put a lot of flux in this area. Um, liquid flux is the best. I don't have any liquid flux. I'm kind of in trouble with that. So I have paste flux. I'm just going to try to use a bunch of paste flux and just really juice up that area as best I can. And then what I'm going to do is put solder on the tip of this iron. Um, I'm going to try to get my. I think this is my smallest tip I have, and then I'm going to take it. I'm going to drag right here on those wires that are leading to these terminals and just drag across like that. So the flux is going to melt and then the solder is going to wick away from the tip to those connections in one act, one smooth action like this, right across like that. I should only need to do it once. Okay, I'll have to look to see if I bridged anything. If I did bridge any of the connections, they recommend taking a little bit of solder wick. You place a solder wick right about here, wherever your bridge is, just at the edge, and you tap it with a little heat and it'll draw that bridge away. You just don't want to draw too much solder off because you just connected it. So that's what I'm going to try. We'll see if it works. So that's that's the game plan, folks. <laughs> First time for me. Um, yeah, and this little dude, fun stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and start building this. I'm going to take some pictures of the build process, be back with those, and then we'll do a demonstration of how this kit works. All right, guys, be right back. Here are pictures of the build process. In this first picture, I populated the board with 12 resistors and the micro USB jack. In this next picture, you can see a close-up of that micro USB jack and the connections I had to make. I used the drag method that worked really well. You put a lot of flux in that area, and you take your iron and put a little dab of solder, and you drag your iron across those connections fairly quickly. You want to do this so you don't bridge any of those connections. It worked out really well. I was using a paste flux. I'd recommend using a liquid clear flux or a pen flux. I just, uh, well, I gotta find some better flux. <laughs> I was using paste flux. And the problem with that was, is I couldn't see where I was soldering. So definitely get a clear liquid flux for that. But it came out fantastic. I was very happy with the result. This third picture, a bunch of things I added. I added seven electrolytic capacitors, one disc capacitor, two S8550 transistors, two diodes, and two 3.5 millimeter audio jacks. Kept me busy, but everything fit really nicely in this board. This fourth picture, I populated the power switch, two variable resistors, three empty IC sockets, and two micro switches. In this fifth picture, I populated the board with two microphones and 20 green LEDs. Yes, 20 green LEDs. I would like to see this kit offer, say, red and a couple amber lights so you can see where you're peeking but this is just an introductory kit only cost twelve dollars so it's not that big a deal in the sixth picture i added the two lm 3915n ic's and a single lm 358 ic now take your time with these if the legs aren't straight 
take a hard take and put it on a hard surface perpendicular and kind of roll the pins in the direction you need to go. That way you can get the pins nice and lined up. Once they're nice and straight, then insert them in the board. Worked out really well. So let's look in front of us. Here it is, the Voger Time. This thing is awesome. <laughs> 10 segment uh, LED for each channel. So you got 20 LEDs total. Um, yeah, I enjoy building this. This is a great practice kit um, because there's a lot of elements to it. Um, you see me do a lot of LED kits only. This has quite a bit. So let's take a look at my board here. So you'll see the 20 LEDs. They're all green and they tend to travel this direction from bottom up. Here we have the two microphones. They're not as sensitive as I would like. Um, even when I was adjusting the potentiometers here, I couldn't get them to really react unless I put my mouth right to there or whistled into them or put the speaker of the radio right next to it. So you're going to find yourself, if you want to use this as a project and a finished item, you're going to be plugging in here and I'm going to demo that. So we can look in here. Let's look at my USB. This is the fun one. <laughs> this is the hardest part of the kit is soldering that little micro uh, USB jack. Let me see if I get some light on there. So I use that drag method like I showed you by taking the iron and with a little bit of solder and fluxing that area real heavily with flux and just coming in with my iron and dragging across. And it perfectly flowed on each of those connections. And I checked continuity with these two points and the USB there. And it worked out great. Just really happy with that. My first time ever doing that, I'm very uh, impressed. But definitely clear flux would work great. <laughs> so there's your resistors. There's the diodes your capacitors. See, there's the two transistors down there. You guys can see those. Two microphones. There's your socketed chips. Okay, you got one for each channel. Got an op amp here. You got the two switches. This is to change the mode for left and right channel. I'll show you what the modes are. Just two modes. And of course, we have an input and an output. That's kind of nice. It said audio in for both, but I think that was a misprint because this is the audio in and when you plug anything in here, nothing happens. This is the pass-through for audio out. And of course, power switch. So we're going to go ahead and plug this in and do a little demo. And uh, yeah, get final thoughts on this kit. Pretty awesome. So I got a power right here. I'm going to plug this in carefully. <laughs> I always get nervous, but uh, I think it's a pretty strong connection here. So it's upside down there. Okay, so we will plug this in. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and what I'm going to do... So I'm going to patch in. I got my XH data right here. And I have a patch cable at the headphone port. And I'm going to turn it on. And this is interesting. We're going to have some fun. I have my FM transmitter transmitting some YouTube sanctioned music. So you can see this work. And I have another radio I can monitor with. So let's go ahead and plug this in. And I'll turn everything on. <laughs> As you can see, <laughs> those green LEDs are blinding. <laughs> so let me go ahead and just uh, tilt this. There you go. I'm gonna adjust that volume some more. Not microphone. I'll show you now different modes or mode.
demo. <laughs> that thing blinds my eyes and it blinds the camera. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, so vulgar time, if you're watching, make those a little less bright. I think we'll be okay. Uh, I guess we could use different LEDs and you could put in a project case and do different things. But let me go ahead and just dis disconnect this here. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Okay, just gonna wiggle this jack out there. Here we go. Okay, but yeah, they give you this patch cable, which is nice. So you get this with the kit. Remember that? And of course, you get your USB power cord. I'm using mine because I have a ton of these things, <laughs> which is great. Also, I wanted to say before we uh, do final thoughts on this kit, I wanted to tell you. I guess I could turn that music off. All right. So the kit came with, you know, that extra. So I got an extra battery thing. Oops. Thanks. So. You get okay this is cool they get two extra leds in case you mess up that's nice to have extras always a good thing and of course you get this battery compartment here this uh three if you do your micro usb right you won't have to use this and you can have this for a future project i thought that was pretty cool so three to play carrier here i can use for another project or a radio whatever i'm working on so that's really nice so for yeah 11.99 pretty impressed with it um pretty cool little kit uh, the mics, I wish they worked better. Um, they kind of bend a little bit, so you got to be careful there. There we go. Just got to make sure you don't bump into them too hard. But yeah, I want to get definitely a project case for this to hold it. And then maybe use some tinted uh, material to uh, block it so it's not so bright. <laughs> that was, it's just crazy bright. I couldn't believe how bright that was. <laughs> but uh, really neat. Um, cool features where you have the two modes. I thought that was kind of nice too. But uh, the in and the out works out really well. Um, so if you want to have a pass through, you have that. And you got yourself a little project that you could use with your radios too. That's the fun part. Alrighty, so if I had to recommend it, yes, for eleven ninety nine, it's a no brainer. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of stuff to learn, and you can practice doing micro USB. What do you call that? SMT technology surface mount because that is tricky. If you can get that done, you'll be really proud. If you can't do it and you mess it up, they give you that five volt in right there. So good to go. Burger time, the 10 level LED music display kit gets a big win for me. Yes, <laughs> definitely go buy it. I'll have links below. Love it. It's just a fun kit to build. Definitely works with our radios too. Uh, two, um, if you like these kits, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon. I'm going to feature probably a kit a week or every other week. I have quite a few I want to build and show you guys. I got some radio kits coming. So yeah, stay tuned to that. I mean, it's always fun to build radio. So we're going to do that together. And of course, I'm going to do some more of these kits where you learn different things, program, maybe even get some transmitter kits. We can do FM transmitting. That'd be fun. And maybe I'll build that CW kit. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. The QRP rig that I got. So yes, yeah, stay tuned. And of course, three, comment below what you think about this one for about 11 bucks. Something you play with, something you put together. Give your hands, you know, give a little try on this. I mean, it wasn't that difficult. Um, the joints in the back, pretty simple. There was nothing, uh, no big issues. Just this was the hardest thing to solder right there. Alrighty guys, appreciate you watching. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.